Okay, so I'm Steve Templeton. I'm the manager of the Enterprise Data Warehouse team at Inspire Brands. Uh, we were formerly Arby's, but with the acquisition of Buffalo Wild Wings, we now become a new company called Inspire. I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak with you all today at this excellent and awesome experience 2018. This is my first trip abroad, and I'm fortunate enough to have my wife attend with me, and we are enjoying the lovely city of Berlin. I haven't learned much about the language so far, but I did get Notch in Beer Bit, which I think, if I said it right, is one more beer, please. So I think I'm saying it right, because I keep getting more beer. So um, I want to touch briefly about what we're going to talk about today. So a little bit about the Arby's history, the roast beef sandwich, lots of data and the challenges we're facing, and how Exosol changed the game for us and what might be coming next. So, a little bit about me first. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, okay, it's good. Sorry about that. One more time, here we go. Okay, a little bit about me. I'm the proud parent of uh, two children, Melissa 16 and Dylan 14, and they're growing up faster than I could have ever expected. They'll both be in high school this year together. Um, my family and I like to travel a lot. Here's some pics of us in Hawaii on top, and New York City Central Park, and a New York City's top of the rock, which, as you could see, was extremely cold, to say the least. Um, also in my free time, I like, to, I like live music. I like to attend concerts and play in my band. Here's a picture of my Gibson guitar collection. There's me playing in my band a few years back with a lot more hair. And on the bottom left is my brother-in-law and I jamming with two-fifths of the American rock band Aerosmith. And that was... Uh, quite the experience. So, um, a little bit more about my professional career. So, I have roughly 20 years experience with um, varying roles in um, different companies. I started out um, went going to school on Long Island, that's where I met my wife, and then after we got married and uh, graduated and got married, we went west to Dallas for uh, greener pastures. And there I, um, I got in with a company called McKesson, where I was an accountant, and so I started out as an accountant. And I kind of got a little bit bored with accounting, doing the closing the books every month. But I did see the need to get managed data better and more efficiently. At the time, we were flipping through giant, fat green bar books to highlight you know, anomalies in, that had to be recorded. And we eventually took that and digitized it and got that data into a database where I could just sort by the, 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 the largest anomalies and make the journal entry. So after I left McKesson and got out of accounting, I went to uh, a small startup company that eventually became Verizon Wireless. There I worked in their fraud loss prevention department, using data to capture, prevent, track fraud. So from there, Verizon, Verizon uh, downsized a bit, and I had to come east, so that, which was great, because I wanted to come back east anyway. It's really hot in Texas. Um, so we, when I went to, came back to Verizon in, um, on the East Coast, I, I held roles in finance, treasury, sales analysis, and marketing, and then eventually IT. And IT is where I learned how to build some good business solutions. Um, and after, but after, after years of Fortune 50 companies, I wanted to uh, try something different and go with a smaller organization, and I um, landed at Arby's. So since joining Arby's in 2016, a lot has changed, most notably the aforementioned uh, purchase of Buffalo Wild Wings and the formation of Inspire Brands. So, so a quick little bit about Arby's history. So it all started in 1964, that's the old picture there on the left, where the founders, um, well actually, in, at that time, the only place you could get a fast meal was a burger joint, right? So the, founding, the founders of Arby's they had a different idea. They believed that they could serve up a hot, freshly sliced roast beef sandwich just as fast. And so Arby's was born you know, in 1964 in Boardman, Ohio. Right? So after the years, or, or through the years, Arby's grew and added more items to their, um, to their brands. They added salads, corned beef sandwiches, turkey sandwiches, and most recently, sliders and gyros, or gyros. Okay, so with that being said, Arby's now has Inspire owns Arby's, Buffalo Wild Wings, and Art Taco. So Arby's has approximately 1,000 corporate stores 
and 2,000 franchisees and approximately 3.5 billion in sales. Buffalo Wild Wings has 625 corporate, 612 franchisees and 2 billion in sales. And Our Taco has 27 locations across six states. So we now have global presence in Saudi Arabia, India, and United States, as well as Philippines, Turkey, Canada, and South Korea. So when I joined the data team, we had, we had a, um, our data warehouse was in disarray. And I won't go into the gory details there, but we ended up taking our, our environment and migrating it to a 2016 SQL Server stack on state-of-the-art hardware and flash storage. As you can see here, we have a pretty common model. Source system data, Oracle, TLD, back office systems, into SQL Server staging, where it's transformed and modeled into an EDW. There, our data consumers can hit the EDW with uh, SQL Server Management Studio, Tableau, and Excel. So last year, we stood up a Tableau instance right, with a portal that was cleverly named Meat Crafted Insights. You can see all the pictures of the, the meats there. Of the animals. The model here was to run Tableau extracts from the EDW to the Tableau server and have them feed the, feed the dashboards. And that was working reasonably well for a while. We would schedule the extracts, and they would run immediately after the, uh, the data warehouse would load. In 2018, we completed adding our TLD data, which is transaction-level detail, out of our POS systems. And this was pretty much um, a new deal is it, uh, for us. It's more data than we ever had before. So now we have 1,000-plus you know, stores, uh, corporate stores, with you know, a few franchisees coming on board, more to come, and uh, over 2 billion records in our uh, order line level table. So with, um, this is the most granular, important data that we could use to understand what's going on in our restaurants. Right? So if you imagine every piece of data from a sales receipt, Right, so here's a sample receipt from uh, one of our labs. So here we talk about the where, the what, the why, the who, when, and how much. Right. So this is this is good information, but it also opens up more questions. Right. So where was the restaurant remodeled? What does this fill? It, does this fit in with a promotion, a national promotion? Was it uh, marketing radio or TV spot ads? Was it a repeat customer? And when was it? Was it one of our day parts, uh, morning, lunch, happy hour, dinner, evening? So, so here the idea was we would, we would extract this data. I'm sorry. So we have all this data sitting in our EDW, right? We're going to extract this data to our Tableau server and feed these, it, the, um, the dashboards. So we, the idea was we would um, empower the marketing team so that they could you know, enter the SKUs or the item codes and with a date range and set up an automatic alert for, their, um, for the products they were tracking, right? So, so here you are. Picture yourself a developer with the requirements in hand. And basically what you need is a large data extract to come to the Tableau server with all the item level detail so the end users could put in the ones that they want, whichever one they might want to track for that day or that time period. Right, so you start working on your query. So here you go, you got your query, you, you, you spent quite a bit of time on it, you're finally happy that a few rows pop up because you got the query right. right? So it's got enough, you got it good enough to where it's running. Right? So then the query runs for a few minutes and you say, okay, well, I think I'll go to the break room or run to the restroom. So you go to the break room, you end up chatting up a little bit, maybe use the restroom, and you come back to the spinning wheel of death. Nothing's still running. Nothing's happening. All right? So now you start, a few more minutes go by. You multitask. It's still running. Now it's time for a meeting. So you run off to your meeting, and you leave this running. You get back, and it's still running. I think we are up to 35 minutes now. Query's still running for 35 minutes. Well, now it's time to go to lunch. So the whole time you're at lunch, you're thinking, will my query be done? Did I write the query right? Man, I need this data today, right? And you return to this, and uh, that's an hour and 33 minutes, it's still running. Or worse yet, it dies. It's dead. <laughs> so now what, right? So, so whatever's out. So 
My top team of developers were able to get the query to work better. They did some optimization and they got the query extracts to, to work, right? But they would often fail, uh, triggering you know, prod support emergencies almost daily, right? So our KLD finishes loading at like 11 a.m. We allowed till 3 a.m. for these, 3 p.m. for these alerts to go out to give us time for that job to finish extracting, account for time where the days is going to fail and we would have to restart it. So there were days the alerts didn't even go out. And as you can imagine, this was extremely frustrating for um, everybody, and quite the burden to support. So we have all this great data and we could barely use it. So now we have Exasol to the rescue. So what we did here was we, um, we installed an, um, an entry-level, low-cost solution consisting of one node with a terabyte a license and a dedicated Dell Exion server. After a relatively quick setup, we are now using Accelerate, um, Exasol as an acceleration layer on top of our EDW. We use Microsoft's uh, SSIS tool to uh, load the data into Exasol from EDW. It's, it's a tool we use for all of our jobs. And what we're doing is we're, we're having scripts that execute on the Exasol side and um, using, um, using the um, uh, Exasol ADO.NET connectors and the SQL Server JDBC connectors. And this pulls the data in from NDW into Exasol, and it goes pretty quick, really quick, about, about 15 minutes. So some of the ways we have here is we, we've, eliminated, we've eliminated the costly process of large Tableau data extracts from SQL. All the production support nightmares that went along with that. The alert data that we are delivering daily are for promoted items. We're spending money on these promotions, right? So this gives us the ability to, to track the promotions and see their effectiveness. So Tableau is now hitting Exasol live daily for the alerts. This empowers the marketing team with the ability to set up the alerts as they see fit when they want without having to work you know, interact or work with the IT team. The data is already there, served up for them, and they're empowered. Since migrating the TLD data to Exasol, we have not had any EDW-related delays for the alerts. We switched it around week eight, and I think now we're in week 28, and we've, with a growth of three million a day, we've seen no degradation in the um, alerting performance. And, you know, the word is spreading around, uh, obviously, we're going to get some more people on the Exasol platform. So, so um, we literally could not do these alerts without Exasol. Some of these alerts are LTOs. That's limited time offers, right? So um, the gyro was an LTO and it became permanent. So we're tracking that continuously. So here's a screenshot of the alerts. The alerts get fired off at 3 p.m. or 3.02 p.m. and they just, they just go right out. Those are the various alerts that they're tracking right now. There's a picture of what the alert data looks like. It comes in an email. And then there's a picture of the gyros which are really good, by the way. I know you're all hungry, so. Um, so what's next for us? We have a um, requirement to get some tax data out of our TLD. So we have to use an order header line and the line order line. And join these two lines in, in our SQL environment would be very limited to be able to get back a large portion of data. We would have to, we would have to shorten it to a certain number of SKUs or a certain small number of days. And what we really need is we need all the SKUs, all the sales for a larger period of data. So with SQL, we would not be able to do that at all. So we are, we are working on that with Exasol, and we're confident that that's going to work very well for us. Um, so just to recap what we discussed, you know, Arby's has large amounts of data that we're rapidly expanding every day, 3 million plus records a day. We're going to have more franchisees coming on and, and possibly more um, corporate stores. So it's going to, just going to get bigger. The prior environment stated the challenges we were facing and how Exasol changed the games for us and a little bit about what's next. So here are some testimonials from some folks on our team, some from developers, end users, and whatnot. So the one I like the most is Exasol is a game changer at a low entry cost. And Exasol is a lifesaver. So that was from one of our uh, data scientists who was working on a project where he had to do iterations of his query to get the data he wanted. And he was doing this in SQL. And it would take 40 minutes for his query to run. And then he'd want to change it a little bit. And then it would take another 40 minutes to run. And then 
Then you had to do that for two or three different products or whatever it was. So it was like by you know, five, six, seven times at 40 minutes a pop, it was exhausting. When we moved this data to Exasol, those queries returned in two minutes. So within 10 minutes, he had all the answers of what he needed. Uh, and so I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity to uh, let me speak here today. It uh, seems like a very fun event. I'm looking forward to seeing what else Exasol could do for me and my organization in the future. Thank you.